everybody. My name is Nayan. I'm the Black Female Engineer. I provide content for new and aspiring software engineers. And today, we are going to be talking about the top mistake developers make when learning how to code. Now, this is a special video because this is actually a two-parter. If you want to see the other part, head over to Sydney Buckner's channel. Sydney Buckner is a software engineer, and she, too, has a channel dedicated to giving you all, all the insights and the tricks and the tips and career advice and unsolicited advice and all of that on um, things that will aid in your transition into tech and so her video is going to be linked in the description box below so make sure after you watch mine you watch the part two for all of her helpful tips as well mistake number one jumping straight into frameworks when you don't even know the base language yet. This is a huge problem that I had. I jumped into Ruby on Rails when I didn't know any which way what Ruby was. And so that is a really big issue because that's like trying to use a calculator meanwhile you don't know long division that's a big problem that will really really affect you and your development in the future and so the whole trying to learn react before you even learn javascript trying to learn bootstrap yet you've never done a project with css that is a huge issue y'all you need to make sure you understand the underlying language because then when you're having troubles with your framework or developing and you see bugs that come up then you have a better avenue of which way to go if you know that the ruby principle is x y and z then you know which way to look if you had just started off with frameworks and even if you do well in everything once you start encountering bugs and working on projects and teams that's really 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 going to screw you over so make sure we don't skip the basics and I know I know when you have this goal of I will be an engineer by the end of the year or by 2022 or X Y and Z it can feel like, oh, I have to make sure I do X, Y, and Z, and I have to jump over to this step, and it, there's a framework built on Ruby, so what does it matter if I know the language itself? It matters. It matters. So please, please, please make sure you don't skip over those steps, don't skip over those hurdles, and start with the basics. HTML, CSS, Ruby, JavaScript, start with the basics. The second mistake, not practicing on your own projects. It is so easy to read something or to watch something and be like, oh yeah, that that makes sense. You know, like write it down and okay, bet I'm going to be an engineer by the end of the week, watch. But if you don't actually open up your own laptop and code these things out, what you're learning really won't stick. It really won't. One, it won't stick and two, you'll realize that actually what you just read makes no sense to you because here you are trying to do it and why isn't it working and so now you need to learn how to actually build those things out and so it's so important to practice with your own projects so you can really make sure you are learning as much as you can because that's how you make sure these skills stay by doing it yourself and also keeping track of what made sense and what doesn't that way it provides you a bit of an avenue of where to go next like okay x didn't make sense or it didn't work okay so let's really hone in on this and really make sure we can figure it out and then move on to the next thing rather than reading 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 and moving on moving on moving on yet you have built nothing so make sure you build out those projects and practice on your own the third thing that is a huge mistake is not keeping track of what you're doing how you're doing it, the problems you're coming upon i.e not having a developer journal this is something that sydney really hones in on in her video how to become a better developer through journaling i'll link it below and here sydney really goes through one the benefits one of those benefits being being able to unload your mind it's so easy to get so jumbled so quickly and if by writing the things you're struggling with down you kind of gains perspective and say oh i thought i had thirty thousand things in my head spiraling around really i have two 
it's really just two things and so let me make sure I write these down cross them off etc also it's important to keep track of how you're learning and how their journey is going and so by doing this you really can get a better sense of what things do you need to work on more what things are you good on and so really just have a better learning journey and so I'll link that video below and in that video she also goes into really how to go about journaling not just why it's important but really how to do it in the most effective manner so really you don't want to skip that the fourth mistake people will be making y'all will be making i have and will be making is not sticking to a strict schedule when you were in school you had a schedule even if you were in preschool they had a schedule for you maybe you didn't realize but they had a schedule for you and that's because a schedule is so important to really make sure you're staying consistent you're staying on track and it doesn't mean when I say have a strict schedule it doesn't mean load it with eight hours of you know class time and make sure you are here by a month from now no but think about what your timeline is for your learning journey and really write it down and write a schedule for yourself so you can make sure you're being consistent. Sydney has a video on this as well called how to create a study plan and this really can end up making all the difference for whether you truly succeed at this or not because y'all coding boot camps are expensive. I went to a coding boot camp. Yo, yo. I'm still paying that off. It is expensive. Getting your master's, getting a bachelor, the money is money. And in school, when we didn't abide by our schedule, when we were late, we were tardy, we just didn't show up there were certain repercussions and so it incentivized you to make sure you went to those classes, went to those lectures and were staying consistent. And so why would this be any different sure i know you're not in a facility you're not in a building but it's still school you're still trying to learn just like in school and if anything it's harder now because you don't have those people to hold you accountable so make sure you're holding yourself accountable by having an actual robust study plan and schedule and the fifth mistake i made like crazy was not being in the growth mindset in my learning so what does that mean y'all i just just me as a person i tend to be very end goal oriented it's important to have goals of course but when your end goal won't be for six months a year that's a long time to go without celebrating your accomplishments. That's a long time to go without acknowledging that you reached a certain benchmark. And so making sure you're in that growth mindset of, okay, I am better this week than I was last week and next week I'll be better than I am now. And making yourself remember these little accomplishments and learn for those small incremental changes and growth it really really makes all the difference because now you're mentally rewarding yourself more you know what i mean and self-teaching is hard enough and so imagine going six months without celebrating your accomplishment without saying oh wow i'm here when x amount of days ago or x amount of weeks ago or months i was here imagine going a whole six months without acknowledging that you've grown and so make sure you stay in that growth mindset and don't get stuck on but i have to get a job within a year or i have to apply by x y and z in six months and x y and z and all of that no you want to make sure you are staying in that growth mindset to make sure that your attitude continues to be as positive as possible during your software engineering transition. And honestly, that shouldn't stop after you finish your learning, after you get a job. You should still, and I'm kind of talking to myself here, you should still make sure you're rewarding yourself for knowing more this week than you did last week and growing and developing. Make sure, make sure you stay in that growth growth mindset not in the jumping from being a nurse to a software engineer in one year and just focusing on that leap no make sure 
you constantly, constantly, to constantly think about what you have accomplished and reward yourself for that. Head over to Sydney's channel and watch the part two of this video because there's so, so much more mistakes <laughs> being made and this is hard enough so you want to make sure you're giving yourself the best shot possible and we want to make sure we are giving you the best shot possible by telling you these things as well so i hope you enjoy the video please like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll see y'all later bye